Hello dear viewers, today I will talk you through 10 most useful potion recipes in Skyrim's poisons are not included here, maybe someday. With my extensive knowledge of the game, I can tell you, these can change the course of many battles. Obviously, what is or isn't useful depends on your character build as well as on your personal playstyle, so the order might be a little bit uh, questionable, uh, arbitrary. But there is one quite measurable criterion for all of them and it is the avail avail available hmm the availability of the ingredients. So that was my main reasoning behind this particular order. I hope this can be helpful to some players that never really dabbled in alchemy because alchemy is awesome and can make a whole world of difference. Needless to say, this is about the vanilla Skyrim. Depending on your mods, your load order, your uh, experience may be quite different and your opinions of what is useful can of course be also very different. Uh, also, uh, uh, they tell me that I should beg for likes and subs more often, so uh, yeah, you like Skyrim, then you like builds, and then you probably may like my channel, so like, subscribe, and come back for more. I absolutely hate doing that at, at the beginning of the video, it's horrible, I feel filthy. Anyway, <clears throat> okay, on with the list. At number 10 we have Azura's Veil. Yeah, I gave them some sweet immersive names. This one grants you invisibility, magic resistance and health regeneration bonus. It is made with Luna Moth, Wing, Nirnroot and Gleam Blossom. As Gleam Blossom is really rare, quest locked in fact, and the potion will be most useful in some very specific situations, it's obvious it should be number 10. Nevertheless, with high enough alchemy and some good sneak skill, it can save your character, help them escape and re-enter sneak in a safe position where you can heal yourself, breaking the invisibility effect, but the regeneration and the resistance will remain active for the remaining potion's duration. Next at number 9 we have the elemental shield, a remarkably useful potion granting resistance to all three elements in Skyrim. Quite unfortunately it cannot be brewed without a hawk beak, which is annoying to get. Uh, you have to shoot actual hawks out of the sky and it's not even guaranteed they will have one on them. Snowberries on the other hand are almost everywhere and dragon's tongue can be replaced with any other resist fire ingredient. Luckily the alchemists and apothecaries of Skyrim can sometimes have hawk beaks in store, so in longer playthroughs you definitely have a chance to accumulate a few of them. You can keep the potion specifically for the dungeons filled with various spellcasters. There are no storm dragons in vanilla Skyrim and the Draugr usually use frost, so this one is a thing for a very special occasion. Moving on to number 8 we have the Spell Surge potion, awfully useful to any sort of magic user, but unfortunately including two not so common ingredients. It restores your magicka, increases magicka regeneration and fortifies magicka. Every time you find yourself in a longer fight and maybe you overestimated your beloved wizard's power, uh, this one can save your life. You need ectoplasm, moon sugar and jasbe grapes, unless you are hellbent on finding all the Khajiit caravans to buy their sugar and hunt for ghosts all the time, in the very few locations where you can actually find ghosts in Skyrim, you won't be able to have a good batch of these. Still, some patience can go a long way. Maybe in your late levels you can use it, but then you won't really need it as often in, in the late game. Overall, it's, it's a good one to have, but just don't get addicted to it. Number 7, we have something more accessible, but maybe a bit less useful, or rather useful only to certain types of mages. The Battle Mages Brew, made out of glowing mushroom, wheat and some glow dust. Hunting for glow dust in the world may be a grind, but at least you can buy it sometimes in some places. And the potion increases your health, destruction, effectiveness and shock resistance. Fortified destruction is wonderful to have by itself. It is one of the very few ways of increasing your spell damage in vanilla Skyrim. And with high enough alchemy it can really be a scary scary boost. But with shock resistance, the most vital resistance for mages, because shock takes away your magicka of course, and some health boost on top of it, it can help your battle mage overwhelm anyone, especially other spellcasters. There is 50 guaranteed samples of glow dust scattered around Skyrim, many of them in the vanilla player homes like Vlinder Hall in Windhelm or Proud Spire Manor in Solitude. There is also three of them in the Palace of Kings in Windhelm, upstairs. Ok, moving on to number 6, we have the succulent swiftness potion created by mixing some beehive husks 
masks, hawk feathers and hanging moss. This is every rogue's dream, as it fortifies sneak, light armor and one-handed. I have uh, more than one build that could use all these buffs at once. The duelist, for example, the assassin too, and quite a few of them. Beehive husk is mainly found in the rift and falkreath, but with one hot fires property, you can set yourself with a renewable source for it. Hawk feathers, not the most common ingredient, but at least much less annoying to find than the beaks, as they can be found not only on those pesky birds, those pesky birds taking all those crops, pesky birds, but also on the even peskier silver hands, vigilance of center, and in apothecary satchels around the world. Overall, sooner or later you will have enough ingredients to craft a little batch of this potion, meaning your skulking, backstabbing and throat cutting should be greatly improved. Ok, now for the top 5, yee! On the honorable 5th position we have the Mage Slayer's Magic, a potion increasing your block stamina and magic resistance, perfect for characters who don't do magic themselves but need to slay some mages. Additional stamina will let you execute more power attacks and bashes, which are perfect for interrupting spell casting. If you are using a shield and have the elemental protection perk in block, this potion will also combine nicely with the perk and increase one of your key skills. A boar Tusks are not easy to obtain outside Soul's time, but when on the island you should be able to gather a few when exploring, so it's somewhere in the middle in terms of accessibility. For number 4 we have Illusion Ingestion, a very handy one for any mage using Illusion, a skill by the way that sometimes desperately needs a buff, well sometimes merely in the early game. Fortify Illusion Alchemy effect increases the maximum level of enemies that can be influenced by mind affecting spells, which will with high enough alchemy means you only need the dual casting perk and a good fortify illusion potion to control the behavior of most enemies barring maybe the boss level ones. This particular potion also restores your magicka and fortifies magicka region. Magicka regeneration is more useful for characters casting a lot of low level spells as opposed to always going for the strongest. Uh, so the potion is perfect for people with a fairly limited perk point investment into the illusion skill to temporarily become masters. It is crafted with dwarven oil, morata pinella and some garlic. Dwarven oil is not the most common ingredient, but not the rarest either. Now number 3, the sorceress solution, made with garlic, jasbei grapes and emperor parasol moss. It boosts your health and magicka regenerations and increases your magicka value. Generally useful for everyone, but to sorcerers and battle mages even more so. The Emperor Parasol most requires a trip to Solstheim, but otherwise isn't that hard to get. Meanwhile, garlic and jasbei grapes are everywhere, can be bought, found and harvested all over the place, don't worry about it. The potion can be great even for builds that use only some low level spells, in which case regeneration becomes more important than the value of an attribute. So because its usefulness isn't really restricted to a very narrow playstyle, because it can single-handedly turn the tide of many battles and because it is so easily available while also offering some profit comparing to the cost of the ingredients especially it deserves the number three position now number two the battle bending blend it restores health it fortifies your magicka and your one-handed best consumed in the middle of a combat when you already lost some hp can turn the tide of battle as long as you are even remotely familiar with one-handed weapons I tried to find a configuration of ingredients that would also give me some health regeneration in this, but I don't think it exists, unfortunately. The ingredients are so easy to obtain, there is really no reason not to have a batch of these. Yes, rock warbler eggs are less common than hanging moss or weed, but if you ever actually travel and not just teleport from map marker to map marker, you should be able to find quite a few. And now, Ratatam Tam Fanfare number one, the elixir of pure your rage. The potion that, with high enough alchemy, can turn anyone into a bloodthirsty berserker at the price of a few flowers and mushrooms that grow everywhere. It has four effects, one of which Fortify Illusion may not be that useful for berserkers, but can be for mages and all the warrior mage hybrids. It has fire resistance for all the dragons you have to face, it has Fortify Stamina Regeneration, which is arguably the key effect for any successful warrior, as it allows for more power attacks, and then it also fortifies your 
you're two-handed increasing your damage output greatly. I vaguely remember squealing like a little girl when I first discovered this recipe. <laughs> Even if for some reason you don't need any of its wonderful effects, it is a great source of income because, well, as I said, it's not hard to find the ingredients and they're very cheap. The ingredients are, by the way, Mora Tapinella, Dragon Stong and Fly Amanita. So here we have it, did I miss one? Uh, I, I probably missed one, uh, yeah, there's so many. Uh, I hope you can now go to herd some dragons and droger with, with your mushroom magic and that you learned something, maybe. <laughs> leave a comment, leave a like, leave the safety of your hometown and go on an adventure. We shall see each other again, yeah. Yeah, bye bye. If you like that video, you're gonna love the next one. I hated that. Video. Well, then you're gonna love the next Shh, one. Calm down. Okay.